We're doing videos again. We're doing videos again. Yeah. So people who are listening to us on podcast apps, they're like, what? What are they talking about? Yeah. <laughs> so you can watch this episode on our YouTube channel on which we'll be posting podcast episodes. Yeah. The ones that will be videoed. Video is not even a word. Filmed. Filmed. <laughs> yeah. Filmed. Yes. Yes. And maybe other things that Nelly wants to put in there. So brand new adventure. I'm really excited for this one. So <laughs> we're going to try to do more videos for you guys if you want to look us in the eyes while we talk to you. <laughs> um, so deep. today, for everyone who's actually watching, you can watch my pesky little white leg. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because it's hot today. It is. It is. It is 20, 21 21 degrees. was in the morning, then it got to 25. Yes. And in Australia, it's like, it's a different 25. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that I realized while moving to Australia. Like, in Europe, 15 Celsius is like, that's fine. <laughs> in Australia, 15 Celsius is like, this is freaking cold. Yeah. And now then there's this, this jump of 21 and Europe is like, oh, that's nice. And 21 in Australia is like, whew. <laughs> it's getting, it's, it's the getting sun bad. really burns. And it, it is. It stinks you. Like a st it's really it's interesting. It's like, it's, it's the same temperature, but it's not really. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, <laughs> today we're going to be continuing the series on which you get to know more of us. And in the last episode, if you haven't listened to it, go to it. We're talking about Noelle's life story. Hey. It's pretty interesting. I learned a lot, actually. I had to summarize a lot. You know how I realized... Yeah, I know. Yeah, you summarized <laughs> a lot. We actually discussed it later in the car, so I got to know more. But <laughs> yeah. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. It was really interesting. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. So today, we're going to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I feel like I'm going to learn more about you than you're going to learn about me. Because... The past episode, I told you a lot about moving to Australia, but because yes. you were moving to Australia, I already had told you in our private life lots of things. So I feel like you didn't really learn, but I feel like I'm going to oh, learn. Wow. <laughs> I'm going to learn heaps. I, I learned a lot. <laughs> so yeah, we're continuing this because there's a lot of assumptions and we want to ju just kind of show you that assumptions are not necessarily as you think they are. Mm. Uh, so we are really quick as human beings to assume, assume a lot of things about other people. Yeah. So uh, I hope in the last episode you learned a lot about Noelle's life. So this time I'm going to go to me and <laughs> I know a lot of assumptions about me. So I know that a lot of people will be like, what? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. I didn't have many assumptions about you. Oh. I told you. I told you who had assumption well, about yeah, you in my life. Yeah, that's one of the assumptions that's going the most. Yeah, so, hey, yeah. I, I knew about this one. I was like, ah, that's fine. I know about it. It's like a lot of people think so. Yeah. Um. But yeah. All yeah. right. Well, We're let's get, get started. There. Start with let's Mini Lexi. <laughs> Mini Lexi. <laughs> so I was born in a really nice city of Gdynia in Poland, mm -hmm. which is north of Poland. You can just write it in Google Maps. It's right. Uh, it's next to Gdansk and Danzig for Germans. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a really nice place. It's next to the beach. It's Ooh. really awesome. And I lived with my mom and my dad and my sister. My mom was uh, once divorced already. So my sister is actually my half sister, but I don't really believe in it. I actually generally believe that going with the surnames by the dad is stupid because the the woman is the only one who's sure that it's hers. <laughs> That's actually Just true. saying. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. It is like that. It's like she can be sure it's hers. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Throughout history, that should be the thing. Anyway. Yeah. So I'm... Uh, Another thing, I may be having some issues with talking about my past and t uh, tough things. And I usually talk about it as if I was talking to you about how to make a sandwich. <laughs> what does that mean? It's, oh, yeah. it's going to mean that I, I can talk about really tough stuff in a way that you will be like, this sounds oddly entertaining and sad at ah, the same time. Like casually. Yeah, casually. Mm. I'm casually talking about the hardest stuff of my life. This is what my therapist said, that this is... Uh, she gave a name to it, but I forgot it because it was complicated. Okay. So, anyway. Hold on, I'm holding on to my butt right now. I'm like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> so, I lived with my dad and my mom and my sister mm -hmm. in a place. Uh, it was an apartment that was changed into an apartment from an attic. Okay. But it's not like the, the cool things that you may now imagine. It's like... Uh, the roof was so low that uh, my dad sometimes had to hunch a little bit. He mm. couldn't get into the like the windows because it was way too low. And it was way too low even for me as a seven-year-old, just saying. Mm. Um, and we didn't have central heating. We had two clay um, fireplaces. 
to give the warmth to the entire apartment. Mm -hmm. And as you may imagine, winter in North Poland was not really nice. Gentle. There was no insulation. There was nothing. Mm. And uh, in general, I remember... I don't remember much from my childhood. Also, we're going back to the therapy stuff. <laughs> um, but I remember standing next to my sister between the cupboard and the the clay fireplace so we wanted to get warm it was so cold no oh. uh this is one of the reasons why i really hate cold yeah i i really cannot stand it because i have a lot of really bad memories from it and uh you said that your family was really like not middle class or anything yeah we lived in poverty mm -hmm. it was pretty bad um i was sick all the time and I was a lot in the hospitals because I had asthma and uh, my mom had to take a lot of care of me. She couldn't work at one point, then she could again and she was doing her best. She was working at the casino uh, the entire night. Um, we sometimes didn't have money for food. Um, my mom had to borrow money from my uncle for food. Yeah, yeah we're getting there. <laughs> uh, so yeah, to everyone who thinks that I'm coming from a rich family, Already, uh, assumption, yeah. <laughs> assumption one is like tick. Assumption like. <laughs> one. I I know hunger. I don't. I I really don't wish it to anyone. Mm -hmm. It's bad, and it will not be just once in my life when I felt the hunger, and it also creates some problems there. But my my parents got divorced when I was around eight. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom was having her own business. She was selling like uh, water filters. Oh, wow. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, my sister and me, we went with my mom. My dad stayed by himself. Um, and I didn't really have much contact with my dad because he was having a lot of excuses. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you call your dad and you're like, hey, can I come for a week? And he's like, no, because I have to clean. Mm -hmm. And as a eight year old, you don't really think much of it. And then you're an adult and you're like, yeah, wait. No. <laughs> Like, why, why would you say that? Yeah. But, yeah, it, it, it was what it was. So we moved to Gdansk with my mom and my sister. My sister went to the university. Um, so it was just me and my mom. And it was pretty tough. It was really, really tough, actually. And I don't remember much from this mm. either. Yeah. Uh, this is when I was on the therapy for the first time. Because in Poland, if uh, your parents are getting divorced and you are like below some kind of a threshold age, you get a therapist. Okay. Which is great. It's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's really interesting. And it's like, you. I, as a kid, I was thinking like, I don't need that. Uh, but to be honest, as an adult, I think I probably needed that way more than I got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So I think every, every kid should get it, by the way, whenever your parents are, are splitting. Because mm. uh, as a kid, it's really, it's really traumatic. Even if you don't think it is, it is. Mm. So um, my sister actually went, uh, she finished psychology okay so it was really interesting also because she was having like a lot of those uh tests on the university and she had to do like um you know like tests on people and she was doing all of them on me <laughs> so yeah. i was her i was her uh, <laughs> one you? one person that she was doing tests on all the time and it was interesting as well because uh at one point she came back home and she uh sat with me and she was like hear me out i love that you feel those tests but are you feeling them like consciously different and i'm like not necessarily <laughs> why and she's like um yeah because one of my professors actually said that she liked the third person the most oh what does that mean <laughs> yeah. and i was like does it mean that i'm a golem or something <laughs> the third like, person I, yeah exactly the first person i was like oh mm. What do you mean by that? So anyway, I was always getting different names. So my sister wouldn't get into trouble for using one person for all of her tests. So, mm, okay. Yeah, I, I really hope that it was about like person. Yeah. Not that I have issues there. Oh my God. So you mean your sister was um, giving her, her tests and giving different names, like as if she was interviewing yeah. different people. Yeah. But then. But it was all me. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone thought you were. Like, oh. oh. Yeah, they liked the third person the most. And she said it after like five. So I was like, huh. huh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we're getting that. Um, so yeah, it, it still wasn't really good. Like uh, we were getting alimony from my dad, um, which also was uh, not enough, of course, because uh, at one point, my mom still says it, that at one point my dad decided not to pay alimony during the summer because in summer we don't go to school. Okay. 
<laughs> that's me. That's my face. People who just <laughs> listened yeah. didn't see it, but I'm like, <laughs> I, saw I it just can't see anything. Uh, say yeah. anything about yeah, it. it. Like, it's like the, there are things in life to which you can say "wow" to. <laughs> that's it. That, that yeah. That's the wow. That, that was the situation. I, ha- so, I had no words. Yeah, my mom had to go to the, the court and be like, you know that like during summer kids still have to eat, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was it Damn. um so my mom was working two and at one point three jobs to mm. keep us uh, afloat yeah and it was getting better with time of course um currently my mom and dad do well so thanks for asking guys um <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're doing okay they're, they're doing fine i think i think we just went through this really tough time yeah it was it was tough mm-hmm. anyway um then we're gonna skip on the pad because it's gonna get too dark. <laughs> and um, at the age of 16, I was forced to live alone. Oh, okay. So I was living by myself as a 16 year old, having just the alimony. And trust me, it wasn't enough for the bills. So I had to work. Mm. And I was working in a friend's restaurant as a waitress. So I was going to school. And after school, I was going straight to the restaurant and I was working there until 10 p.m. And then coming back home on my foot because I didn't have a car, obviously, yeah. or a bike because I couldn't afford a bike. Uh, so I was going back on my foot. It was like half an hour or 45 minutes walk at 10 p.m. Damn. Oh, great. <laughs> 16 years old. 16 years Ugh. old. Yes. And yeah. then I had to get up at 6 a.m. to, you know, go and take a train to my school. And it was going and going and going for years. Yeah. <laughs> and this was the second time in which I was hungry and I was being uh, helped out by teachers at my school. Oh, really? Yes. They they noticed that there was something wrong. They didn't want to make a big thing out of it. Yeah. They knew that I had problems. They couldn't really figure it out. I didn't want to talk about it. And they were giving me sandwiches. Wow. Yeah. So that was actually really nice. I do appreciate. So if you are my ex-teacher, thank you. <laughs> That's amazing. You are appreciated. They are some good people in this yes. world. Yes. Yes. So mm. that was it. And uh, so, yeah, I was working since I was 16. I was not partying at all because I was dead. Trust me on that. I was also working on the weekends just to have extra money. And then I was working from 12 to 10 p.m. Okay. So it was every single day I was at work. And tips are great, by the way. If you ever have a dinner at the restaurant, really tip those waiters Mm because they deserve it. Yeah. I'm still it's a hard everything. job it is a really hard job and sometimes people are just so shitty yeah, yeah. oh and they treat you terribly like yeah they do don't it's do really it. like it's, it's my job i mean it, it's not my fault that the cook didn't do what i said <laughs> yeah. you don't have to shout at me yeah you know it's, it's really not my fault i was crying a lot by this time oh. but um we're back <laughs> back to the topic so my dad <laughs> shows up yeah in my life again when i was like 18 i'm scared old. somehow <laughs> <laughs> no, he, i mean he was dead he was kind of dead he was sometimes like uh, during the weekends and stuff like this and he kind of got it like uh, i remember that uh, with my dad we were meeting up on the weekends mm. and um I do appreciate it now, actually, when I think about it. But uh, we were meeting up and we we're going for dinner. And I was eating a lot on this dinner, trust me. Because I was thinking, like, I need to eat a lot. Because yeah. otherwise I'm going to be hungry again. Yeah. And uh, if you were wondering why I post so much food, this is it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my dad had a rule which was saying that I chose this life for myself. Mm-hmm. And he can help me out by buying me clothes or books or things that I need that are like things that I just generally need, Mm -hmm. but he cannot pay my bills and he cannot buy me food. Okay. Mm. But you didn't really choose the knife, did you? Yeah, Mm. I kind of did. Okay. I I, I did. All right. That's fine. It wasn't like I did chose it. It was kind of like I was forced to, and there was no, no way out of the situation. Yes. Okay. And then there was this moment in which, you know, two people don't want to say sorry. Hmm. I would like to hear sorry one day, but (laughs) it won't happen. Um, So it was a really tough situation. So um, we were going for dinners though. So, uh, and I was having something to put on myself during winter. So he was buying me like jackets and stuff. So it was great. Loved it. And books. Okay. So I appreciate it now because my dad actually, I feel right now that it did tell me like, I have to do stuff myself and there is no help. Mm anytime soon coming and this is okay because like i think a lot of times 
kids, especially girls, are being told that there is this um, knight in the silver armor, which, by the way, historically, this was the last thing you wanted to see. Um, <laughs> it really was. <laughs> <laughs> it was the worst thing you yeah, wanted to see. It's true. <laughs> we can go on it. Actually, yeah. Let let's skip this on ad advertisements. So, <laughs> if you were a princess or like a noble woman back in the Middle Ages, and you were like taken away somewhere, when you saw the knight in the silver armor, you were considering suicide because those knights in silver <laughs> armor would either take you and uh, kind of like. Well, yeah, rape you and uh, make you their wife so they can have a good life as a noble mm -hmm. or make you their wife so they can have a good life as a noble or, uh, well, actually save you from one imprisonment and take you to another so they can get money so they can live a nice and noble life. So they were the worst. <laughs> yeah, we don't need knights. <laughs> they were the worst. Um, so, yeah, as a girl, I think you you being told a lot that someone will come and save you. Mm. My parents showed me that this is not necessarily <laughs> an option. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And probably for a good good reason. Yeah, yeah. there was there was a good reason. So yeah, we I never got a chance to have like uh stuff after school, like uh, I never go got to like go for any lessons after school and stuff like this because my parents couldn't afford it. Yeah. Then I was in the situation in which I decided for myself because I could I could kind of like skip their school, right? Because I was like I'm 16 year old, I I cannot figure it all out, but I decided that if I will not finish my school mm. this is going to be my entire life yeah that's a and i didn't want that i thought like if i will learn if i will finish university if i will do all of those things i will get myself out of there mm -hmm. and this became like my life mission so i know that that's what we, what we talked about last time that you made those ma small choices yeah. and they get you up the ladder yeah and you can just hope that you the ladder is on the right wall mm -hmm. yeah so i decided that uh, i will just no social life, but I will live and I will finish my school. Yeah. So whoever thinks that they should skip school, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. um, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> that was straightforward. <laughs> straightforward. You're, you're wrong. wrong. <laughs> um, and uh, after my school, I actually finished school with honors. And again, thank you very much to the teachers that were giving me sandwiches. Yeah. Because uh, I probably wouldn't finish the school like that. It's too without. hard otherwise. Yeah, it yeah. was really hard. Um, so but, can you yeah. remind us what you studied? Because you said it in the other episode. Oh, yeah. So in school, I actually finished advanced uh, biology. Mm -hmm. uh, I like we uh, in Poland, there's like something like matura at the end of the school. So you pick up the like the mm, like basic and advanced uh, courses okay. from which you want to kind of finish it. And I knew that I wanted to go to architecture like my grandpa. Okay. So I needed history, biology for some reason math yeah physics that makes sense um advanced biology had to be also in advanced history for some reason <laughs> math normal thank god physics <laughs> normal thank god uh, <laughs> really uh yeah. there was of course polish uh english i did advanced one um which was really funny because i was the only person in school that did the advanced english because i was a native speaker anyway at this point oh. um yeah and I was the only person doing it. So it was me and four teachers <laughs> in the room. It was great. But it's interesting. It felt so weird because all of them didn't have anything to do but watch me. And I was like, creepy. <laughs> I told them that it was creepy too. And they were like, I know. <laughs> so that was hilarious. Um, so yeah, I finished advanced biology, advanced history. And I'm a history geek. You guys know that. Mm -hmm. I love my history. Hence um, the night tangent <laughs> that we just got two seconds ago. <laughs> If you want more random stuff, go to my Instagram. I do runs. I do runs. <laughs> fun right. facts. Fun facts. <laughs> fun facts of the day. Sometimes I learn something and I just put it on Instagram because I feel like some people need to know. <laughs> yeah. I like your stories. Yeah. They're nice. Sometimes I'm just messaging them to you or to random <laughs> people. I'm trying not to message everything to one person so they won't start thinking that I'm weird. <laughs> um, but so I went to architecture. Yeah. And my school was unfortunately paid. Ah. Oh. So I spent an entire vacation from the Matura to uh, university to get this money. Mm. She was hard, to be honest. Yeah. Because I got into the school that I wanted to and it was a really prestigious school, but unfortunately it was private. Mm. Um, so I had to have around 3,000 euros a, a semester. Oh, wow. That's a lot. This is why... What I was saying in the previous episode, why friends, people take it for granted. And then you go to other countries and you're like, 
This is so expensive. Well, you, you could go to the, the <laughs> normal one, uh, but I really wanted to go to the prestigious one for a couple of reasons. One of them, in the normal uh, university for which you don't have to pay, you have like 50, 60, 70, 100 people. Mm -hmm. And in the prestigious one, you had like 15. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they were really getting into like, you did wrong this thing in yes. particular yeah so i thought like if, if i'm about to invest in anything in my life mm. that's going to be my education mm. yeah good point again a really small choice that was really hurtful but um so my plan was and there was a really serious plan that i will learn so much that i will get the scholarship and i will not have to pay <laughs> second semester yeah i had just that much money <laughs> i was gonna ask about scholarship stuff <laughs> yes so <laughs> we're getting there <laughs> We're getting there. Uh, so I did tell my mom that I got into the school. I did tell it to my uncle. I did tell it to my dad. And I was so happy that I got to the school. And actually, that was the first time in which my dad actually gave me money oh. for my school. Yay. Thanks, dad. Thanks, dad. <laughs> it was really helpful. Trust me on that. It's a big, big difference from not paying your mom during the school holiday to <laughs> then helping you for school i'm like oh he grew up at the end of the day i understand that our parents have no idea what they are doing yeah when you're a parent you, you probably can agree you have no idea what you are doing um so yeah my dad paid for my first semester thanks dad mm -hmm. and for my second semester i did get the scholarship yes and i was keeping it up until the end of my university and cool. I finished my university with honors as well, nice. uh, with the final grade of five zero, which is the highest you can get. Woohoo! Ah! Well done. <laughs> but during the, my university, I actually decided that I don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. Uh, it happened. No, it wasn't really that. It was that I was having this uh, one pivotal moment in my career in which I skipped the memo that no one was going to this one lesson. <laughs> Oh, and I was the only one with the professor there. It's great. <laughs> uh, and uh, he started telling me what will my future look like. And that was on the last semester, by the way. It was like three months before we finished everything. Yeah. And he told me that, well, actually, you will have to go to nine to five because you have just engineer's degree and you will do a lot of projects for someone else. And since you have just engineer's degree, you cannot sign them as yourself. So your boss will say that it's their project. Oh, okay. and then that if the city is making like a project like oh yeah we're looking for architects to do this park or whatever mm -hmm. uh, they actually know who makes those projects and it's really not random or best project it's i know this dude oh it's like yeah a bit of corruption yeah so i went through this and i i went through this this one talk with him and we were talking for one and a half hours about it mm. and i was like yeah that's probably not for me <laughs> yeah uh, so i started uh i actually applied uh for some reason the same day uh, i found out uh, there was like a program from google mm -hmm. it was a mentorship program okay and i applied because i was like maybe i want to be a programmer why not and i actually got it wow so i consider it a sign from the universe i got a mentor from google her name was uh, Catherine. She was great. Mm -hmm. And she got me into a sponsorship program from MIT. Okay. And I got, uh, I finished computer science on MIT. Wow. How uh, long, like, did it take? To uh, it actually took, it was just a really, really serious computer science on MIT for six months. Okay. Yeah. Mm, so it was like basics with Python. And uh, now, by the way, I was doing this MIT course which was really drastic and mentorship program. And I was finishing my university at the time. Yeah, because you still had to finish it. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that's hate. Because I wanted my engineer's degree because yeah. I paid so much money anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, we, we're going to have to do it. So I'm really happy to, uh, to have this engineer degree. I actually thought that it was a wasted time in my life. But now considering coming to Australia, mm. it helped me get the visa. Yeah. So, <laughs> and I feel like what you've learned somehow opened your mind to so many things. It can only teach you, sometimes studies teach you how to learn and oh. how to. So then if you need to change career path and you need to learn something, then you, you're already in the past, you've learned stuff. You're yeah. like, okay, this is how we learn stuff. And yeah, you know. and it also taught me uh, like photography, videography, because it was also artistic and it uh, taught me like design stuff. Yeah. So this helped me a lot in my programming career because I could do front end and back end. Mm -hmm. 
and I was uh, I was actually hired for some time um, as a contractor mm -hmm. for a company that was doing like websites and uh, web applications and stuff like this and it actually helped because I was the only person who knew any type of design okay so that was helpful yeah just so you guys know so yeah that was my first job I got it right away and it was paying 800 euros a month <laughs> it's great <laughs> for American dollars it's probably what 750 dollars yeah, something like that. and in Australian it's um about mm, I don't know I don't know 1100 yeah, yeah but in Polish it was a lot just yeah. so you guys know 800 euros in Polish was actually pretty pretty decent mm -hmm. I could pay my bills and buy food yeah so it was great finally <laughs> finally and it was half time so I was just working four hours a day Cool. So it wasn't it wasn't that bad. I still had time to do my other things, and somewhere on the university, I started doing FPV as well. Oh wow! So um, yeah, that was also tough because a lot of people say like, oh, I uh, I would have to say save uh, like for two months to buy a radio. I was saving for four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Um, so yeah, I started doing FPV, and it started to actually be pretty good. I started doing the YouTube stuff. Um, my dad actually got me a camera, my first camera for my birthday. It was great because before I was using like Xiaomi Yi that I got on Banggood for one hundred bucks. Yeah, and I was saving for this camera for like two months because I wanted to start YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, um, and yeah, and since then it was starting to go, go, go. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that I had just this half-time job allowed me to actually build my YouTube and go on all of those races because I was telling to uh, the boss of mine like, hey, I won't be available for like five days. So I just did all of those things within this frame time. And I was really doing a lot of time management at the time. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty rough as well. Uh, but I got a possibility to travel all over the world uh, I was in Korea in China US uh, a lot of Europe covered and I was really traveling for free because of, free. Sponsors because of sponsors and, and events and stuff like this yeah so that actually helped a lot and this is when I started feeling like my all education and all of the hard work and everything is really paying back yes <laughs> it was getting there <laughs> and uh, yeah and then I um since I was working since I was like 16 years old, so I, I did get some uh, savings. I actually had an apartment uh, and I sold it while moving to Germany. Yeah. Um, so that was actually great. Mm -hmm. And I moved to Germany. Some people know what everything that happened from this point on. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, I was living in Germany for like four years. Um, also doing a lot of FPV stuff. And I think FPV really helped me because it also helped me doing more public speaking because I was doing this before for just programming and stuff like this. Yeah. Just, you know, inspiring more women to do stuff like that because I also have seen a lot of BS mm. towards women. You, you gave me once an example of a teacher... Was that a teacher? No, you were teaching and you saw things. Ah, yeah. 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 So I was, um, at, at some point when I was doing the programming stuff, I was doing some public speaking and I was hired by Hackerspace. Yeah. Was it Hackerspace? It was. And they were doing like courses for children mm -hmm. in schools. Yeah. And this is when we noticed a really interesting thing. When we were saying that there's a, a course for kids uh, and we were putting the guy's name first and then mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, there were less girls signing up. Oh. And when my name was first and the guy was second, there were more girls signing up. <laughs> I can see. And it was really interesting because we, we were testing it for a couple of months. Oh, just yes. Just skipping the names one, one way or another. Hmm. Uh, so there were girls. <laughs> and they were actually really excited seeing me doing stuff. And I did realize a lot of differences between how boys and girls are being raised. Because um, when a guy did something wrong in a code, he would come to me and say that th this doesn't work. He did everything I did and it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And I would come and be like, okay, you missed a comma here. It's okay. Everyone makes mistakes. That's fine. He learned. It's fine. We're, we're good. Yeah. Now, what girls would do is that would, they would delete the entire code and say that it's not for them, they are not good enough, and stuff like this. And don't get me wrong, guys, you may be having different experience, but this is literally like half of my uh, half a year of my life doing it and seeing it. Uh, and I would be like, but it's empty, you know, like there's no code. And we were sitting here for like two hours and I so had typing shit. Yeah. She was so happy about the colors and stuff of the code that I gave her. And uh, you would just do, you know, like control Z and there is a code and there was like a small mistake, like the lack of the comma. And now the boys would say um, it doesn't work 
<laughs> repair it and the girls would say it doesn't work i'm not good enough and i was like this is kind of like this is wrong wow so a lot of girls actually came to me and they said that oh i'm actually here because my mom allowed me but they said that programming is not for girls mm. and now and the only reason why they allowed them to come was that they were excited because it was a woman giving those lessons oh. meaning it is for girls because she's doing it Oh. So this is what I came from with uh, when I say that it's not about saying that it's for everyone. It's about showing that it is for everyone. Yeah. And then, yeah, I was once uh, invited in one of those schools for like a disco of kids. And it was like primary school. It was like kids like eight, nine, ten. <laughs> and uh, I saw the situation that will stay with me my entire life. I think I talked about it in the Michael Rollins show too. Mm. Um, so there was this boy and a girl and the boy wanted to, you know, dance with a girl. And she said no. And I mean... You can say no. Yeah. If you don't want to do stuff, just say no. Yeah. Also, if you get meetings to any, you know, like meetings uh, at work after 5 p.m., you also click no. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, and this girl said no. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's fine, right? So the guy threw a tantrum. Mm -hmm. Like, that was the biggest tantrum I have seen in my life. <laughs> Maybe not. Okay, wait, I have a nephew. <laughs> I take it back. But okay. this boy threw a tantrum and the mom comes in and I didn't know if it's a mom of the boy or the girl. So I was just looking at it like, okay, I'm not going to intervene. I'm just going to look because that was the first disco in my life of kids. Yeah. So I was just standing there being a little bit confused and a little bit embarrassed of what I'm seeing. <laughs> and uh, this woman was apparently mom of the boy and she started telling the girl that she's so naughty because she doesn't want to dance with him. And I was like, Mm. this is wrong like you know i mean it's like get to my car no thank you you naughty you should get into my car and it's like come on yeah maybe i, I went overboard with this one but you know what i'm saying no i and, understand uh she was telling the girl that she's naughty she's not she's mean she should be nice she should be dancing with him and i was just standing like what the yeah what the hell yeah. and then i see the other mom coming and i was like okay that's, that's the mom of the girl right and she was and i was like yeah she's gonna tell the other mom to just like I go thought. away <laughs> yeah yeah and she didn't oh wow so sh what she did was that she told her own daughter that she's naughty because she doesn't want to dance with the boy oh. and i was really saying like <laughs> You shouldn't be saying things like this to your daughter. I mean, she said no. She gave her own opinion. She doesn't want to dance with this boy. She doesn't like him. If a guy came to you and be like, marry me, you say no. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know the guy. Yeah. Right? So why would you want your daughter to dance with a guy even though she doesn't want to? Yeah. And I told it to them, like, this is wrong. And they looked at me and they said, you don't know anything about children. I'm the mother. I know better. And I'm like, no, no, you don't. <laughs> You, you absolutely don't. This is, it this has is nothing really to do with having children of not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's it's really having something to do with analyzing how society works and, yeah. and realizing this is. And I, I literally said like one, no, you don't. Two, I'm a teacher, so that that should give you something, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and I actually don't have any education in being a teacher. So <laughs> <laughs> I was just using it as an argument. <laughs> <laughs> no, but didn't work actually. Yeah, <laughs> I still trust your judgment, you know. Thank you. And, and it's not like there's a limit between saying, I don't know how to explain, but the, she was not being mean by saying yeah, she no. Just said no. She just said no. Yeah. She wasn't like, oh, but you're ugly. No. She yeah, just said it's, like, it's no. exactly the thing. Like when uh, a lot of times you see on Instagram, like, oh, when a girl says no, she means yes. No, oh, yeah. she doesn't. She means no. And she said it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's really like, it shows you right away how society works because what it taught to those kids. And I have, again, no education in psychology, pedagogy or being a teacher. The boy saw that he can go off with everything. Yeah. The girl saw that she's naughty. She shouldn't be saying such things and she should just be obedient. This is what they learned at this situation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I really hope they're doing fine now because they should be like 20 by now. Probably. Probably, yeah. Probably, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's that's basically the thing that I saw. And I, I cannot put it out of my mind every time I see any type of this really sexism situation. Mm. Uh, so I saw those those types of things. Yeah. And fast forward back to FPV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did so it as well. <laughs> oh, my God. I will never forget. That. There was this dude, like, I was on a race. And he literally told me, oh, if you was here to watch your boyfriend, the spectators area is there. <laughs> And I, I just looked at him and just put my goggles on because I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Um, and I won against him. And 
with the most sassy thing I could have done was just looking at him and being like, if you're waiting for your girlfriend to fly, <laughs> the spectator's area is just right there. <laughs> and then I ran away to my friends because I was like, he's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture you saying that. and like, <laughs> I literally went friends. to my friends and I was like, if you see this guy approaching, please save me. <laughs> and they're like, what did you do to him? And I'm like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> So this happened a lot of times. Like people go into me like from TV being like with a microphone, like you're a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, um, good eye, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, Could you say yeah, something different? I. Yeah. It's like, what, what did you expect? Like, okay, good job. <laughs> so yeah, that was my life. <laughs> <laughs> that was I, my life that was my life actually yeah also on my university if you think it's prestigious school and you pay for it a lot and that means teachers will be nice for you there was this one dude who literally asked me if i came to this university to find myself a husband and i was like what no what is this school oh my god <laughs> like he was going like this for half a year uh. I forgot to tell you something. Oh, there you go. <laughs> but it's not because it's your life story. I want to make sure. <laughs> I think we went back and <laughs> No, but I feel like I want to make sure we finish about oh. before I distract you from what you, you know, you had your. your I'm in Australia now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want no, to finish I'm first? <laughs> okay. I can just say like. Yeah. FPV stuff. Uh, it really changed my life. I really think that it gave me a lot of possibilities uh, and everything that I've done actually got me to the place I'm here now yeah uh, there was a lot of other stuff going on so please don't get me wrong guys like I've been on therapy since I was 16 mm. um for a good reason and actually I think everyone needs a therapy yeah everyone everyone has reasons everyone needs mm -hmm. a therapy for real um and uh, I've been having a lot of problems we will not go through them uh but at the end of the day everything that happened to me i believe that made me the person i'm now yeah if i didn't go through all of this maybe i wouldn't be myself and maybe you wouldn't be listening to my voice right now maybe there would be a different girl or maybe there would be no one else actually mm. um i'm proud of myself right now of yeah. what i've achieved and we're there so in germany i had a lot of really a lot of jobs i did started my business uh in germany and it was going pretty well up until COVID. Yeah. <laughs> up until COVID, everything COVID was great. effed up everything <laughs> yeah COVID messed up everything yeah i was about to like speak on the same conference as elon musk oh what i was about to speak with him kind mm. of and, like, mm. and it got cancelled because of COVID. What? damn you COVID. yeah oh so I was doing a lot of stuff, just so you guys know, like, um, when, when, uh, yeah, back when I was having, uh, like a lot of travel videos and I was all over the place and there was a lot of the empty office series, if you guys remember it from like old days, mm. um, back then I was working 12 hours a day Oof. plus. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't really easy. I was getting up at 5 a.m. <laughs> every single day. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. I don't do it. <laughs> I mean, it was do it if you want. Do it if you want to, but it was a mistake <laughs> in my in my books. But anyway, yeah. Now I think it it just taught me a lot about um self discipline, uh, really doing a lot of stuff, time management, not wasting time on meetings, and um, I'm really not made for nine to five. I think a lot of meetings could be an email, or just not really being not bothering me with them. Yeah, <laughs> do not. Uh, but yeah, I think it just taught me a lot and made me a person I'm now. So I'm really grateful for this. So uh, if you guys had any assumptions that got debunked right now, <laughs> leave us a comment on our Instagram. People have probably <laughs> had their jaw here when they started. <laughs> You're probably and like, like, jaw like, is not like <laughs> at the knee. Yeah, like, yeah if, I know that a lot of people thought that I, I come from like rich parents and stuff like this. I, I was told this so many times and I was like, you could not be farther away from the truth. Yeah. Like some people literally ask me, like, do you even know how it is to be poor? And I'm like, I do. Yeah. Probably there is a chance better than you. So I do remember really being hungry many times in my life. And this is why I'm so fixed on being successful, making money and food. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you can say probably that I'm really fixated on food. <laughs> uh, you're a good cook for sure. <laughs> but to be honest, like my sister is also fixated on food because of the same situation. We've been going through the same thing. And the difference is like she cannot stop eating and I cannot stop eating, but also thinking about being successful and everything. <laughs> so my, my mind is so fixated on different topics. We're s different people, but this one thing is like, it's the same, but it has, it shows that the small choices take you to a different wall on the ladder. Mm, yeah. So yeah. yeah, 
but she's doing great by the way she's having her own house right now with a husband and a child and I love them so much and they live in Dublin and it's great and my mom is doing well right now too and my dad is doing well so I'm really happy that everyone's doing well and I hope that everyone will do well and if you are going through a hard situation right now and a hardship this too shall pass and just do everything in your power to put yourself in a place in which you want to be and you will see it will work you just it, it will just take time it will not be easy because i mean i was working since i was 16 and i started succeeding when i was like 23 so it took a while yeah yeah that was an interesting you go. story. <laughs> she looks so, really scared. Though. No, 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 no. I, was, I, I, told just... you go, I told you, you need to do it first so I know how dark can I go. <laughs> well, I didn't go too dark, um, but yours was very interesting. It's it's funny how we come from different backgrounds. You know, now that I've done mine um, and you've done yours, we both come from different families and backgrounds. You know, you had diverse, diverse parents. You were in poverty. Um, my parents stayed together they're still together um you had a sibling i didn't have siblings and somehow we both at some stage for different reasons thought we need to take charge of our life mm. otherwise it's not going to go the way we want oh yeah um so it's interesting because you could tell people who listened to the previous episode were like well you know i've said it myself in the episode that i was privileged uh, even though my parents when i was kids were not super rich we you know we would eat pasta a lot <laughs> but at least we were eating pasta you know compared to what you just said um mm. and also you know a very strict um a, a raising for me and you your parents were not giving you much financial support for what you wanted to do yeah but they were also really straight they were saying that i need to learn like my mom yeah. my mom used to say and i i will thank her forever for this she said um you don't have to be pretty first you have to be smart and when you're smart and pretty you will take over the world <laughs> that's true so as a kid i really didn't care if i'm pretty or not yeah i started a little bit later when i started doing youtube actually so <laughs> you get a little of... bit of judgment there mm, yeah. um but yeah it, it really showed me that first i need to be smart because if i'm pretty there is no knight in a silver armor coming to get me yeah my parent my, my dad about education you know in france the grading is of when you you note like you mm. pass exams it's from zero to 20. Uh, mm-hmm. Most people aim for 12 because 12 gets you anywhere. If I, w- I was anything lower than 18 out of 20, I had to explain why. Like if I was bringing a, a 15 or a 16, my dad was like, w- why? Oh <laughs> and God. I had to explain. I it. told it to her G the other week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> About the grades. <laughs> yeah. So when my parents started doing better, of course, uh, my mom, when she was coming back from the meeting at school, because also at, at school, I was I was not good at the beginning. And then I realized that if I want to learn, I will just really finish on the street and everything, like a lot of people. And uh, I started learning. It was like a little snap for me. And I was like 10 when it happened, actually. First snap, 10. Yeah. Um, and I started learning and I went through like, because uh, the lowest is one and the highest is six uh, in school. Okay. So I went from twos to five sixes <laughs> oh wow yeah within a year so it was interesting because uh, i really i i really actually thought that a lot of things that they teach us at school is boring and useless it's true i actually at, at the end of my high school i told my uh, teacher from math that if i will ever use any of this i will call her and trust me i finished architecture and programming i still didn't call <laughs> so there's a lot of things that are absolutely useless so yeah, the, uh, but I remember when my mom started doing a little bit better and uh, she was coming back from the meeting at school, she was getting me either the Lindt Lindor, the, those <laughs> pralines, the red ones, oh. or uh, like eggnog ice cream. Oh, okay. So good. Uh, Wait, so, yeah. eggnog. eggnog. There's alcohol in eggnog. Yes. How old were you? Eleven. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it was so good though. <laughs> Yeah, at 11 right. having eggnog <laughs> eggnog ice cream okay i okay. don't know if there was much alcohol uh, in it. Right. i have no idea i trust my mom <laughs> okay i should probably <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so whenever i see those uh, red lindors i'm like oh no i don't deserve it oh I no. i'm like do i deserve it next time i bring you them i force them <laughs> oh, no, you eat your lindor. So yeah that was one of the things like uh because uh, my parents knew that we w- my sister and I, we did develop a problem with food. Mm. 
uh, and it wasn't that we wanted to be slim or whatever we were just so in love with food because we were so afraid and I'm still so afraid I will not have it so yeah. I cannot throw away food you just I will eat more just to kind of I'm fighting it I'm, yeah. now I'm freezing everything if I cannot eat it <laughs> um, but yeah we were really so fixated on food mm. that they started like rewarding us with like better food Oh, okay. Uh, so now I'm fixated on like healthy food, so I will not be sick. I'm, you know, trying to work out and do all of those things and also eat really good food mm -hmm. and cook everything myself. Um, but my sister went the other way around. So, yeah, yeah she went into like all their food. Yeah. Just give it. Yeah. Um, that that makes sense. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. yeah, it does. But yeah, if you ever wanted to, oh, I'm fixated on food. I think <laughs> on, uh, Nelly can tell you, like, she's been here for a little while. She, she ate a lot of food. Here. Oh, I love it here. <laughs> I get feed. I, like, I don't even have to say, uh, can I have food? I just, like, food appears. <laughs> like, we went on a walk this morning, <laughs> and suddenly I get out of the car and just, like, here's a snack and i'm like thank you oh yeah because i had it and rg said like give it to her like because he knew that you like it because i told him that i was sending it to you from uh germany yeah and he was like do it like a surprise come on <laughs> i'm like ooh, okay well, that was great this way. so yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, what that was a great um weekend we spent together i'm glad i'm glad i came I'm glad you came too. And I'm glad we're starting to do this recording, yeah. this video. Um, I hope you guys enjoy watching us, <laughs> just talking. This made me think, a few things that you said, because I was going to add more things, but I don't want to. Actually, I want to save it for another podcast episode. Oh, okay. the, <laughs> when you talked about moments of realization, because um, you, you, I'm sure you had several, you know, throughout your life. And I think sometimes it's I sprinkle it in... in <laughs> yeah. No. I um I sprinkle it I sprinkle mine in podcast episodes but I've never really explained how things have happened I've realized things about you know women's role in society like when I started realizing stuff and I think it would be a good podcast episode um, yeah, yeah guys if you're interested in comments like, yeah and in Instagram please yeah. yeah yeah we're gonna do we're gonna try to do more of the recorded version of this um, obviously we won't always be on the same on the, on couch, the couch together i can do a couch <laughs> you well, can she's gonna be on yeah, my couch, <laughs> on her couch. Yeah. so it's a good couch but we're, we're gonna edit it in a way that you know it looks a little bit more video friendly yeah uh, we're still gonna have guests i have to figure out how we're gonna make that happen with guests how they're gonna record their 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 own part but i really wanted to bring this to video platforms so that you know people who actually want to put us on tv in the background they can have us visually talking yeah, you about you want to watch us we're here yes <laughs> cool i think we can call it a day is it like almost an hour now yeah, yeah. 47 minutes just like yours but mine was more talking <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting i loved it ah, thanks <laughs> thank ah. you thanks yeah, for sharing. if you guys want to know anything like tips tricks on how to make yourself do stuff <laughs> yeah. whatever i'm here for you you have lots of courses going on now yeah that's true that's true. I'm trying to like create more passive income because I'm so deadly afraid of being hungry again. <laughs> no, but also you share it's so true. much valuable knowledge. It's not like you know, you're not you're not monetizing silly things like your feet or <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You guys have socks. <laughs> so no, <laughs> socks. But I'm thinking what no what feet. you you give people in exchange of money is valuable i, I, I believe so. a lot of those things are free too because yeah. i do believe in free education because i want everyone to be educated so they are able to get themselves <coughs> out of the situation yes been there done that a yeah. lot yeah yeah so i do have a lot of understanding to people who are struggling and if you guys ever need to talk you know where to find me and yeah yeah maybe you will get more messages now about Ooh. stuff like that i do enjoy that don't don't worry <laughs> i'm here for you uh but yeah I'm, I'm usually trying to you know like if someone comes to me with uh things i, I will listen yeah uh, of course um I, i'm not i'm not one to give you like advice uh because everyone is different i can just tell you like what what happened to me so i i had a couple of snap situations in my life uh usually too late mm. but yeah i mean we, we've all been struggling everyone struggles yeah different levels yeah 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 so i mean uh, at the end of the day um when i'm thinking about it it's like i came from poverty and a girl who didn't have uh, even food at home into living in australia flying electric cars for speed and just being a pilot following her dreams and stuff like this so if i can do it you can absolutely do it yes find ways yeah and Hopefully. it's just about really showing that it's possible uh so that's like my life motto is um just like a writer's motto it's uh show don't tell 
Yeah. Because I can tell you anything. You can be literally like, uh, I could tell you that you can do whatever you want. And without all of this background, you probably be like, yeah, what can you know about it? Uh, I do. So it's it's about just showing that it's possible. I didn't have anyone to show me that it's possible. So I was just going through thinking like, I can do it. So mm. if I can do it, you guys also can do everything you want. Yeah. 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 Good advice. Yeah. If anything. I hope that this was not too depressive. <laughs> I'm not as depressed. I said, I, I was talking about it as if I was making a sandwich. This is this is my corporate <laughs> co- coping, coping mechanism. Yeah, it is really. Yeah, I'm used to this with my mom. Oh, she does it too. Yeah, I, w- I will not say too much, but yeah, she she had a challenging childhood, and sometimes even to these days, we're talking about stuff, and she drops information like like you said, like if she was telling me yeah, about the weather the morning, and yeah. i am like damn this is not you it's know not normal yeah. it is not normal but oh, it's fine. I'm so working on it. I, she trained me to listen to oh, <laughs> that's great. That. That's great. <laughs> no i really enjoyed it. and thanks for sharing you know because this podcast we don't really know once it's uploaded we don't know which is it end up going in, in. and and that's i true. feel like it's very brave for you to share um your story like when i suggested it to you i didn't know if you wanted to tell stuff you know um like yeah that, and i so. knew that it's dark somewhere there <laughs> yeah i didn't tell you a lot of stuff but it's just like a like an overview here yeah yeah, yeah. we don't have a week to talk about it no <laughs> <laughs> not enough alcohol in this house <laughs> not enough alcohol. but we'll do more episode about moment of realization on these kind of things in between obviously yeah, more that, tech that, and that sounds good yeah if you yeah. guys like want to know like when is the moment in which if you are tired of something and you want to know when is the snap moment because mm. uh, it's actually hard to realize when is the snap moment i was once in the snap moment for three months yeah it doesn't mean so like it's not a moment yeah it's phases sometimes yeah, sometimes it's phases yeah. yeah yeah so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this episode mm-hmm. and if you did or if it made you sad also leave it a like please <laughs> if it makes you sad give it a like <laughs> give it a like please um <laughs> yeah if, you, if we really need your engagement guys so leave us a comment and um uh, like us and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcast because that helps us immensely in making all of this happen. Uh, we are preparing some other stuff as well, so don't don't worry. We're going to try to do as much as possible. possible. Yeah. And yeah. And thanks to Tohol for hopefully hopefully sponsoring this episode, sponsoring well. this episode. <laughs> maybe they'll be like we're not sure about uh, this yeah they'll be like you know what no <laughs> but yeah we we have this sponsor yeah. trying to get some more and um thanks yeah. for listening everybody it was yeah, nice thank you very much yeah what you can do most to kind of help us out with all of this podcast is to listen to it and share it with your friends yeah uh that that helps immensely and if you are watching us on youtube then just comment 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 even if it's just an emoticon or a sad face or happy face <laughs> Uh, we do appreciate and like and share yeah that helps us immensely and yeah yeah. we'll see you soon yeah we'll see you soon have a nice one bye bye